Sounds good. Uh, for starters, just kind of tell people about yourself and uh, why you decided to run for legislature. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, my name's Ethan Clark. I live here in Ord. Um, I'm a local community leader. I work at Acres Ac or Equipment, and I'm on their marketing and sales team. Um, I previously worked at the state legislature and in U.S. Congress, so I think I have the experience to truly hit the ground running because so often state senators get to the unicameral and they have to kind of learn the ropes a little bit over a year or two before they can really start getting going on good legislation. So I don't think I'll have to do that because I already know how the system works. Yeah, I'm running because I think that we need true leaders from rural Nebraska here to represent smaller communities and make sure that we can amplify them and allow them to grow for the future. As you look around the 41st district, which is a pretty expansive district, are there some common themes or challenges, opportunities, things where the legislature can be engaged in that would positively benefit the people of the district. Yeah, absolutely. My priorities for my campaign, I think, really align with the values and the needs of the people of the 41st district. One, we need to lower tax burdens overall, especially property taxes. My belief is that you need to be cutting back on spending. Our state government is starting to look a little bit more like our federal government, not quite as bad, but it's over bloated in some areas. So we need to cut back on costs. That's the true way to get tax relief, not shifting taxes around between one thing or another. Um, and then second, rural economic development is huge. And that really encapsulates a lot of different things. Um, the thing that I hear about most knocking door to door across the district is there's not very many good housing opportunities, especially for younger families that are looking to either move back or move into small towns. They want better housing. Uh, it's just something that there's a true lack of in the district. And if we want good people here, we need good housing opportunities for them. And then that leads to even more housing because then there's more people to fill good jobs. Uh, and then lastly, of course, supporting our public schools. That's something that I'm really, really focused on, making sure that our education curriculums are controlled locally, because I think that our local school boards and superintendents and principals and teachers know their communities best. Sure. So I want less state regulation and overreach uh, for our local schools and making sure that students aren't just getting the political ideology flavors of the month, they're getting just their education and then we're relying on our communities, their families, their churches to truly teach them the morals of society, right? I think that's how it should be. You shared a little bit of your background. Uh, can you share a little more, uh, you know, uh, are you a native Nebraskan? Where did you grow up? Um, you talked a little bit about your some experience in government, uh, some of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I am a native Nebraskan here. I grew up in Papillion. Uh, my family originally settled in Rushville Gordon area. Okay. We're actually uh, potato and wheat farmers out there. Uh, back in the day, they sold off the farm in the late 80s, early 90s because property taxes were too high at the time. My grandparents were retiring. But um, uh, yeah, I have really great experience working in not only the state government, but in the United States Congress as well. So I worked for former Senator Andrew Legrone, a staunch Republican candidate out of the Gretna area, and really focused on uh, voter ID laws, um, banking regulations, insurance regulations, and just strengthening our election system overall, as well as trying to lower tax burdens. So in that position, it really allowed for me to learn the unicameral and its unique processes because Nebraska is the only state that does it this way with one house. Um, and so I definitely think that I'll be able to go and research, draft, and advocate for strong legislation and also advocate against bad legislation. From the legislature, I went to go work in uh, D.C. for both Congressman Adrian Smith and then Senator Deb Fisher. Um, for Congressman Smith, I focused more on constituent responses, so making sure that I was the one answering the phone, I was the one replying to emails and letters, and kind of running the day-to-day -day operations of the office there. Um, after Congressman Smith's office, I went to Senator Fisher's office and uh, actually focused more on communication, so anything from press releases to talking with media members to uh, her social media. And I can tell you that dealing with this, a U.S. Senator's Twitter account is a daunting task some days. So it's always entertaining, to say the least. Um, after uh, living in D.C. for a few years, uh, my wife Elizabeth and I definitely always knew we were going to move back to Nebraska. And uh, she had asked me if, uh, she, if I would ever want to live in a small town like Ord. And I said, well, if we're going to move to a town like Ord, let's move to Ord because I know that that's a good place to 
raise a family, plant our roots, and truly get involved in the community. And it was the best decision that we, frankly, have ever made. We've really enjoyed our time getting active in the community here. And I'm sure you know how it works in a small town. Once you volunteer for one thing, you volunteer for pretty much everything else. So I'm really active here. I'm on uh, the local teammates mentoring uh, chapter here as a mentor at the elementary school. And that's been a really rewarding program. I go to the elementary school usually once a week just to go eat lunch and have recess with a local kid here. And it's been a great experience. I'm also very involved in our church, uh, Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church here. Um, with that, I'm in Knights of Columbus, and then I'm also involved in North Loop Lions Club. So anything from dealing with or helping with uh, kids that have hearing or uh, vision difficulties, trying to get them to get tests done. So if a kid has hearing difficulties and the family didn't even know, it can really help them to get hearing aids or even glasses to make sure that they're able to really take in education a lot better. Cool. And then also I'm on a local economic development board. Um, it's uh, called Greater, uh, it's called the Greater Loop Valley Activities Inc. Okay. So it's actually a nonprofit that's focused on recreational activities. Okay. And then also uh, we're taking on the Rural Housing Workforce Grant for the area. So working on adding housing to the area, we're trying to build a few duplexes right now. We just hit the ground with a few shovels here in the last month. Greater Loop Valley activities, okay. Gilva for short. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yep. Uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about your understanding of the process. I, one thing I've asked all the candidates about is just, you're one of 49, a lot of work happens in committees. Um, how would you approach um, just what kinds of bills you would be interested in and what kinds of committees you might have an interest in serving on and, and some of that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Well, at the end of the day, uh, the legislature really controls funds for the state, right? And so making sure that we're appropriating funds correctly is a huge thing. Um, I've really looked into a lot of different committees. I think that for this district, being on the agricultural committee could be very impactful. Um, and then also being on the appropriations committee, controlling where we're actually sending funds to across the state is really important. Too often we're seeing the majority of funds going to Omaha and Lincoln. They're always going to get the majority, but out in central Nebraska, we at least need to get our fair share. Sure. And the only way that we can really ensure that is with strong leadership from this area. And I wanna go there to not only be the correct vote, but to be a true leader, run for committee chairman, uh, chair positions, and maybe even move up the ladder a little bit further than that. So we need true leadership, not just the correct vote. Um, I don't know if I've heard the word conservative, but would you consider yourself a, a conservative? Yes, I am a conservative Republican candidate. I'm pro-life, pro-constitutional issues, pro-Second Amendment especially. I am a sportsman and angler myself, so trying to ensure that uh, yeah, we're protecting our Second Amendment from federal and state overreach is very important to me. Um, and then generally, um, well, it's, how do I want to ask this? Governor Billet is the governor and will be for the foreseeable future here. Uh, do you have a relationship with him? Do you generally uh, like the direction he's taken things or there's areas where maybe you would draw some distinctions? Uh, I don't know. How would yeah, you yeah. No, I've gotten to know Governor Pillen well throughout his campaign and then now as governor. And him and I really get along well, and we've talked about issues in depth a few times here, and I really appreciate his efforts in trying to lower property taxes. The only disagreement I would have with him on that issue is that I don't believe in shifting taxes around, um, but I really do appreciate what he's trying to do with that. Yeah, but generally you would be on board with a lot of the things that would be- Yeah, I think that we're typically in agreement on most issues. Yeah, good. Uh, you talked a little bit about just the campaign process. You've been getting out and, and knocking on doors and probably flipping pancakes and doing all those things. Oh, all the things. Yeah. yeah. So across the eight counties in the 41st district here, I've, I'm proud to say that I've knocked on over 5,400 doors in all eight counties here. And uh, I've got signs up all over the place and have been fundraising well. I've been talking to community leaders, businesses associations, and... Uh, just trying to make sure that I'm representing everyday Nebraskans is really important. And getting my name out there to show that I'm the common sense candidate. I'm not trying to represent extreme political ideologies. I believe that at the end of the day, a lot of people are closer to the middle of the political spectrum here in that sweet, meaty part of the bell curve instead of towards the tail end where voices typically seem to be a little bit louder and more intense. Sure. 
Uh, what else was I was going to ask you? You talked about the housing issue. Let's drop the pen. Um, and housing that probably ties in also with workforce, childcare. Yep. A lot of those things are probably wrapped up. Absolutely. Together. Yeah. Yeah. So housing's kind of the first thing that I think needs to be addressed so that we can get more people here. And then we have more people to work in childcare opportunities. We've got more people to go and work in the trades in the area. Sure. I mean, working at Acres Equipment, I know that like workforce is a huge struggle right now. Nebraska is blessed to have very low unemployment, but that also means there's not that many people for open jobs. So there's a fine balance there, and right now we're a little low on the amount of people looking for good work, and we need to find those people here and recruit them to come live in a good community where the you get to know everyone, they know your name, they care about you, and it truly takes a village to raise a family, and uh, I've experienced that out here as my wife Elizabeth and I are expecting our first here in September. Oh, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to growing our family here and uh, expanding and getting to know everybody even better than we already do. Uh, I should probably start to wrap things up because we can't go forever. Um, yeah. But just as folks, you know, if folks are still heading to the polls on election day and they're looking at that ballot and they, they see three names there and maybe on paper they look pretty similar and they got to decide, I got to fill in one of these little ovals next to somebody's name. Why, why, should, they, uh, why should they vote for you? Yeah, I think people should vote for me, Ethan Clark, on May 14th, because I'm the experienced local leader in the race. I've already been at the legislature, been in Congress. I know how to actually get things done. I've got a vast network of elected officials and organizations that I already have worked with in the past. Proud to say that I'm endorsed by both uh, Senator Pete Ricketts, Senator Deb Fisher, and Congressman Mike Flood, as well as many state senators and other organizations across the state, including uh, Nebraska Young Republicans and then Students for Life Action. So making sure that you have a good network is a part of getting things done at the legislature, and I already have that network to do that. I want to represent common sense, everyday Nebraskans. At the end of the day, I don't think they want extreme political ideologies being the representation. So vote for common sense, leadership, and experience, and vote for me. Any other? That's a good place to end, I suppose. Any, yeah. any other things you wanted to mention that we didn't bring up yet? Um, I guess if you want to learn more about me and my campaign, visit clarkfornebraska.com. That's C-L-A-R-K-F-O-R-Nebraska.com. Or visit my Facebook page. It hopefully should be easy to find.